Hello and welcome to the Encouraging Word broadcast tonight. And uh, tonight we have a couple of prayer requests. Um, we pray for uh, Wayne. His, he went through his biopsy today and he'll get his results Tuesday. So let's pray that those results are good and everything turns out well. And, um, and Marilyn, uh, Marilyn uh, she, her knee uh, is having given her a lot of trouble. So keep her in prayer for that knee and, and pray that uh, the Lord would touch that and heal that. Amen. Um, also, let's go to the Lord in, in a word of prayer for our, our nation, because we, we definitely need prayer as a nation. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for this day, and do thank you for, for uh, taking care of Wayne throughout his surgery, the biopsy. And God, we just pray for good results, or that you would direct and guide and, and lead him, Lord, in his life, and direct him to you. God, I pray for Marilyn that you would uh, heal her her knee and, and help her with that and give the doctors wisdom as, as they are going to be treating that. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, help her through all of that. And, and our nation as well, Lord. Um, our nation is hurting and there's a lot of things that are happening. Um, many things happening a direct uh, result of, of sin in this nation. And God, I just pray that you would... Um, forgive us. I pray that our nation as a, as a country, we would turn to you. As individuals, we would turn to you individually in repentance and ask your help. God, we thank you. You are amazing and you're good to us and you're so much better to us than we have ever been to you. Lord, we pray that you would bless and, and strengthen and help your church here in this world reach out with the good news of the gospel with the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I give you thanks and praise because you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, also, we are coming to you tonight encouraging word from the book of Psalms, and we're going to come from Psalm number 15. So Psalm 15 says, starting at verse 1, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh, his against, uh, taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. You know, as I was looking at this psalm, the psalmist asks, you know, Lord, who who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? You know, the good questions. Good questions before the Lord. He he wanted to know, you know, who's gonna who's gonna abide there? Who's gonna live there? And he says, the answer here is he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh truth in his heart. You see, God's standard is holiness. God's standard is righteousness. God's standard is truth in, in being upright, not wicked, not evil, not unloving, and not unkind. God says here in, in his word in verse 3, He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up reproach against his neighbor. You see, God takes very seriously what he's, he said from the beginning, that we're to love him first. And to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is one of the things that's sadly missing and lacking in today's world. A love for God and a love for our neighbors. We must make sure that in our lives, that our lives reflect this love. We have to, with all of our heart, love the Lord our God. With all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, our strength, everything that's us. And we have to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we don't do wrong to our neighbors, and we don't do be any of these things that say backbiting or, you know, doing evil or uh, taking up reproach. We don't do those things. We show love. Maybe we don't always agree with our neighbors on everything, and that's okay. But our attitude and our approach has always got to be one in love. Amen. You know, that's the one thing about our. Uh, you know, even in Christianity, there's a lot of things that people have a little bit different opinion about certain things. But the one thing that doesn't change is our our obligation, our duty, our responsibility to love one another despite our differences in those things. 
Now, I will say that where it comes to the matter of salvation, the major issue, right? You know, you can't, you can't have differing opinions about that. There's one opinion, and that is Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him. The scripture is clear on that, clear on that. You know, but some people will have disputes and arguments about, uh, you know, the exact timing of the rapture and, and all of that, you know. And uh, if you ever ask me, I'm going to tell you I'm not interested in debating about that at all. Not at all. I will tell you that uh, as a human being, you're going to die one day and you're going to stand before the Lord. And I will tell you also that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't lie and he said he's coming back. And he also said that the Father knew the time. So well, why am I going to try to figure something out that he said it's in the Father's hands? I just have an obligation to live for him. To love the, the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love my neighbor as myself. And to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. To walk with him. To talk with him. To be that child that's, that is looking to abide in his tabernacle. To, to dwell in his holy hill. That has to be the desire of our hearts. Our desire has to be not on this world, but what's to come. He says here in verse 4, um, it says, In whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. How many people today are not walking in the fear of the Lord? You know, if it's any indication of, of the things that I've seen, there's a huge lack of this necessary thing in the church today. I'm not talking about and maybe our particular fellowship here, but I'm talking about as the church as a whole, we need to appreciate and understand more the fear of the Lord. We need to walk in that, to know that that should govern. You know, two things that go hand in hand, what govern our actions, the fear of the Lord and our love for God. Those two things right there should govern and, 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 and direct you in your conduct on a daily basis. Do you love God? Do you fear God? You know, those are questions that if you have no, if you answer no to either one of those, uh, then you have a big problem, a very big problem. You see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? So if you don't have fear of the Lord, first of all, you don't have wisdom. And without wisdom, you're headed into foolishness. So be careful. Amen? You know, it says here that uh, he honors them that fear the Lord. God honors you. Fear of the Lord is a good thing. It's a really good thing. And uh, love for God is a good thing. Keeping your eyes on what's important is a good thing. And asking God to put a guard at your lips is a good thing. You know... This life is short. We're only here for a little bit of time. And we have not, as people, treated one another right. We all, every one of us, need to treat each other better. We need to love one another better. We need to love the Lord better. We need to walk in a, a way that's pleasing to God. Because our lives are short and our time is running out. Jesus is coming soon. And even if he delays his coming, you and I will see him soon enough. You know, I think about today as I was I glanced at the, you know, the news and and uh, saw, a, you know, some tragic, you know, tragic uh, deaths up in up north. One of the police officers was killed and Another one wounded. I saw that uh, in this state we had, you know, what, five more people die of this infection, this uh, pestilence that's going on. And, um, you know, it, it, any death is tragic. You know, uh, every death is tragic because it's a loss for a family, someone, you know, mother, father, friend, brother, sister. And what's even more tragic is that there's many people that leave this world, this life, without Jesus Christ. To enter into a Christless eternity, I, I honestly can't tell you 
what would be worse? To go into eternity without Jesus Christ? That's a horrible thought. It's a horrific thought. God sent his son. He offers life. He offers it to you. We need to turn to him. And we need to embrace God with love. We need to embrace one another with love. Because you won't always have those people around you that you have around you today. Love one another. Live for the Lord. If you've sinned against God and you, you know that you have uh, your fellowship is not where it should be, then repent and ask Him forgiveness. He'll forgive you. He loves you. He'll welcome you. The Bible shows, shows us that when a sinner is repentant and turns to the Lord, not only does He accept you, He runs to you. That's it. Uh, I pray that you're able to join us tomorrow. A Bible study, 6 o'clock. Remember, love one another and treat each other right because God does hold us accountable. God bless you. Have a good night.